This is a video covering my feelings on monster manuals and bestiaries and things like that. So let's start with a uh, 3.x product, 3.0, you know, 3.5. Monster Companion, Monsters of Faerun. Okay. And uh, I do not have an optimal view on this. So, it was made by people. That's how you know it's flawed. <laughs> Alright. There's no such thing as a perfect system. And you, you can only see about half of this with the way I have my setup currently. I'm going to try to work on that. But there's there's just a lot of rules to pay attention to and notice before you even get into what the creatures are. And so all right. 10 pages of rules text before you really get into what the creatures are and that sort of thing. And that, that's a lot to carry over. So, oh, sorry. Um, let's look at the Arakorok, Arakokra, Arakroka. Okay, so I want you to know that it's a medium sized monstrous humanoid, 1 to 8 HP. So basically, 4 HP. So basically, they take the average, and that's how they get that. Initiative plus 2 due to dex. Um, fly speed 20 feet, or sorry, speed 20 feet, fly 90. So it's average uh, style. AC 13 plus 2 due to dex, 1 to natural. Attacks, 2 talents. So we're, we're getting into all of this finite detail and then we're where it's from the climate the organization and they put a lot of work into the organization and for, for me personally I know there's a flock you know but they, they call this a tribe and that's different treasure standard alignment often neutral good advancement by character class so there, there's a lot of information on what a creature is especially if you can use them as playable characters um, but overall you end up with so much stuff you have to break down and there are considerations during combat and there, there's got to be a better way to distill information about what a creature is and its capabilities. And that's something I've struggled with for years. So, and that, that's why in my custom creatures section, you could see how I laid out, like, the name of a creature, life, tally, basically, and then okay, and then different stages. Now, I would use usually use ink, but this is just for demonstration, and S1, S2, S3. So I break up their abilities into stages, and this is worth either 15 or 30 hits. Okay, so if you line through, oh, now we do this, or it, like that ends up with 30, or say you want this thing to be dead pretty quick, just X through. 
Now, then we have, over here we have the evasion rating. Let's give that the 13, okay. And the, the reason why I call it evasion rating is evasion is more of an, an avoidance word. And I, I've been over that. So armor class becomes evasion rating in my system because you're trying to avoid damage. Especially when the creatures are not designed for that. And then you give them their movement. So what was it? 20 and 90? 90 with fly. Sorry. It, and you just write down abilities like this. And then for every card you have. Like say this is a name stage one. Okay. And then you have three different abilities that come from the creature itself from stage one. So let's go back. Find the Aracodera. That really long name that's... Okay. A special attacks. by summon large air elemental. So it only... And then... Sp well, yeah. Okay, so... You just write down the, the smallest details that are important. If they are smaller than important, you do not worry about them for the actual combat. So, summon large air elemental and uh, let's go for bite. You, you give it an overall cost of how many actions would this take basically and uh, for my custom creatures I, I gave them a mana cost so that way they couldn't spam things during their ability times so or during their actions and that's important so basically when you're able to see how healthy they are based on their stage kind of like a boss fight in Final Fantasy you're able to naturally see how useful these abilities are during that process. And when you have an active system that is dedicated toward using the abilities in the book, it's far more useful. And when you can see approximately how many successful attacks your party needs to do something, you can better weigh and measure the overall combat encounter. And that to me is far more important than just about anything else. Because you don't want players to get bored. You want to be able to quickly and easily keep track of your numbers. You want to quickly and easily be able to keep track of the creature abilities without ever having to open up a book. Players should never know what's behind your game master screen or dungeon master screen, your judge screen, whatever you want to call it. Players need to have a sense of immersion and that's what keeps the game going if players know what they're responsible for and the game master dungeon master or judge knows what they're responsible for you end up with a far more coherent narrative experience because you don't want players to question the judge's rules all the judge needs to do is say, well, in my world, this is the case. And the reason why the judge needs to clarify that is because it is literally impossible for you to play the Forgotten Realms, the exact same Forgotten Realms that Ed Greenwood pitched. And the reason for that 
is this book, sorry, James White and Rob Heinso, Forgotten Realms. Okay, so that right there informs you that the Forgotten Realms is not the sole result of Ed Greenwood's work. Other dungeon masters, other creators had a part in it. If players question your ability to create and to quickly generate adventure and generate story for them, they're wasting their own time. They're not meant for your campaign. Because obviously, they want that true Forgotten Realms experience. Forgotten Realms is a collective experience. They don't know what they're talking about. But this is why all these stat blocks and everything else, it, it's just essentially pointless. Unless you translate it. Because... Nobody wants to wait for hours on end to figure out what happened over the result of a few attacks. Or like this thing has one, one or two health left. And you can change up, sorry, the life tally, right? So you don't need five boxes for... For each category here and you can use the stages as oh it's limping oh it's starting to summon air elementals more frequently because even though it's exhausting and taking its actions up it's just trying to survive or at least get vengeance like stage one could be measuring the battle stage two could be taking the battle serious and stage three could be like a desperation stage and by measuring that into successful attacks what you do is you create the system that holds the game accountable for itself holding the game accountable for itself means that you don't need to fudge die rolls. You don't need to do anything extra special. You just need to be honest with the players in a quick and precise manner. And this allows you to do that. Keep notes, keep them short, keep them simple, keep them to the point, and keep them from making the players bored. Because once the players get bored, it's really hard to get them back on track. All right, everyone out.